Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make a very cheap but effective plant light that is very easy to build and can be easily scaled up if desired. The main components only consist of standard LED house lights like these here and a pie tin. And I chose these because the lights are only $4.85 per box at this time and the pie tin is only about 30 cents a piece. Now the two different lights we chose here are this Cree 60 watt replacement, which uses 10 watts, and this EcoSmart 75 watt replacement, which uses 13 watts. Now I chose these two just to compare them. And over here, we're taking a look at the warm white LEDs. This is the 2700K for both the Cree and the EcoSmart. And to the camera, you probably won't see too much of a difference, but to my eye, you can see that the Cree actually has a slightly more yellow hue and the EcoSmart has maybe a, just a tinge of red color to that as well. Now let's take a look at the daylight. And here's the daylight for both brands, the Cree and the EcoSmart, with the Cree over here on the left and the EcoSmart on the right. And to my eye, uh, there is a slight difference between these two color temperatures, even though they are both labeled as 5000K. The Cree seems to have a slightly more bluish tinge than the EcoSmart, where the EcoSmart has maybe more of a neutral color. Uh, Again, just like the other 2700K bulb, this has a slightly, maybe a slightly more reddish hue compared to the Cree. So to get this project started, the first thing we actually need to do is remove the dome filter on the top of these lights. And the easiest way to do that is just to put it in a vise and then just to clamp it down. Then once you have it clamped tight enough, all you have to do is grab the base and basically just kind of pull it and it should peel right off just like that. And now with the diffusers off the tops of these lights, we have the Cree over here on the left and EcoSmart on the right. And I'm still basically seeing the same thing where the Cree has a slightly more yellowish tinge to it and the EcoSmart has a slightly more red tinge to it. Not a huge difference, but if you're making a grow light and you wanna have the best spectrum possible, you might wanna be a little critical on what you choose. So here's the daylight version of both the brands after the domes have been removed. And with the Cree on the left, you can see that there is a slightly more bluish green hue and the EcoSmart on the right, you can see there's a slightly more yellowish red hue. Now, depending on the white balancing of this camera and the screen that you're viewing it on, it's gonna probably look different to you, but to my trained eye, that's what it looks like to me. So you just have to take my word for it. Now here's a side-by-side -side of the warm white and cool white Cree lights. And here is a side-by-side -side of the EcoSmart warm white and cool white lights. Now, honestly, I don't really think it matters which light that you should choose to use, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna be using the Cree light, and I'm choosing this one for a few reasons. The first reason is because the diameter of this light is slightly smaller than the EcoSmart, which means I can have these discs closer together, which gives you better overlap on spectrum. The other reason is for the sake of the heat sink. In the Cree bulb, you have these two screws which hold the heat sink onto the diode plate itself, to where the EcoSmart is basically just siliconed in place, so you don't, get, you don't get quite as good contact. The heat sink actually sits right in the back of the base of these lights. The entire base of this light is one big heat sink. So now we're gonna get to the build. So the next thing we need to do is come back over to the vise and put the base of the bulb in there and clamp it down, and then simply just break off the bottom of the base. And now what you have to do is remove those wires as well. So here's a closer look of the inside of the bulb. The center wire here goes down to the center of the socket. That would be your hot wire and the wire that comes out to the edge of the socket would be your neutral, and all we're gonna do is cut that off. And just for reference, this is the EcoSmart base. The metal part actually comes off of the plastic really easily, and the wires inside aren't actually soldered to anything. They just feed right through the holes down there in the bottom. So this whole top plate just peels right off with a screwdriver. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the base units for both brands with the Cree on the left, the EcoSmart on the right. And you can see the main difference right now is the circuit board that controls the LEDs is actually up inside the heat sink of the base unit of the Cree. To where the EcoSmart, all you have here is the heat sink base and then all the electronic components are actually mounted to the circuit board itself. To where the Cree, the only electronic components mounted to the circuit board is actually just the diodes. And that's basically just for better thermal control. Uh, that's also another reason why I'm choosing to use the Cree light. However, it is a little bit easier to work with the EcoSmart because the base comes off easier and all you have to do is basically solder to these two wires here. And it's also important to note that you always solder the hot side to the middle wire on both of these lights. So that would be this one as well on the Cree. So now what we're gonna do is take our lights and we're gonna put them on the pie tin and trace around them just like I've done here. Now, in my opinion, it's actually better to have them closer together like this more towards the center because that's gonna give you better overlap of spectrum between the two different color temperatures of the lights. 
Now to cut out these holes, you can do it any way you like. You can just use a pair of scissors or you can use an X-Acto knife. I have chose to use this X-Acto knife with the scriber just to make a little bit more of a clean cut. Okay, now that we have our holes cut out of our pie tin, I went ahead and marked the center position of the light so that when it's set on here, it will be centered. And to mount this to the pie tin, we're gonna be using JB Weld Quick Weld. Now you can use any kind of uh, adhesive that you'd like, but I would not recommend using any hot glue, obviously, because it's gonna get warm, it could melt. And I would not use super glue because super glue can leave fumes and it leaves like a white coating and you don't really wanna get that on the diodes. So now that we've got all the lights epoxy to the pie tin, we're gonna go ahead and take this scrap wire that I salvaged out of a piece of electronics equipment and we're going to solder the red on the center leads and the black on the neutral leads. Okay, now that we've got all the wires soldered on, we're gonna go ahead and attach the electrical cord to the leads. And this is just a cord I got off of an item that was being thrown away. Now at this point, after we've soldered the electrical cord on, it is pretty much ready to use, but honestly, I would try to make it a little bit safer if I were you. So in my case, what I'm gonna be using is, is this high temperature RTV silicone. Uh, you could use regular silicone. I would not recommend using hot glue at this point to cover any of this up, because remember, this is still gonna get warm. So we're gonna basically cover up all the electronics on this side where any exposed metal is, and then we're gonna cover up these wires all with high temperature RTV silicone. Now that any exposed metal has been covered in silicone, we're gonna go ahead and give us a coating of spray paint. Okay, you can see the light is all painted now, and it doesn't look all that pretty. There's all kinds of ways you can dress it up, make it look nicer. Um, it's not exactly done yet. We're gonna go into a few more details, but um, not too bad for a $10 grow light. So this next step is totally up to you for what you want to do, but what I'm going to do is turn this into a hanging light. And all I'm going to do is make holes on four sides of this pie tin and put some strings in there to hang it up. You can also make a stand for this uh, and make it as tall or as short as you want for your application. But one thing that is really good about these lights is that they're dimmable. So if you use an inline dimmer, you can make this as bright or as dim as you'd want it to be depending on your proximity to your plants and what kind of plants you're growing. So in the next step, I'm gonna hang this up over my plant and we're gonna talk about why I chose the lights that I did. So this is the underside of the light and you can see how I've arranged the LEDs. Now, if you do decide to make your own, it's very important that you arrange the LEDs in such a way that you're gonna get a good overlap on the warm white and cool white LEDs. And also if you decide to scale it up to make sure it's patterned out so that you get a good even blend. So here's the finished light hanging over top of my dwarf Cavendish banana tree. You can see the light looks very natural. Before getting into talking about why I chose the lights that I did, I just kind of go over a few of the finishing touches. I zip tied the electrical cord to the hood to make sure it doesn't move around. And I also used some old speaker wire head laying around, which is just this really thin gauge speaker wire. And then that just goes up to here to some zip ties, which goes onto an S hook. And then on the bottom side of the hood, I just tie little knots right up there. And that way you can adjust the level of the hood. So now let's talk about why I chose the lights that I did. So I decided to make this because I wanted a light for a small bonsai tree that wasn't red and blue. I have seen some very impressive results in previous plant related experiments using high quality lights that utilize only warm and cool white diodes. So you can click the link at the end of this video to learn more about that. Since I couldn't find what I was looking for online, I decided to make my own. You just can't beat the fact that these regular lights already have the electronics and heatsink built in and are also dimmable. And you can also take these little chips here and mount them to a flat heat sink and make a pretty nice grow light panel. As far as why you want to mix color temperatures, it's basically to cover a broader part of the spectrum that would not be possible by using LEDs that are a single color temperature. So I hope that helps inspire some people out there. I was inspired to do this simply because I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I don't know if there's any other videos on YouTube that are similar to this, but I didn't want to look it up because I didn't want to be influenced by them. I wanted to create my own. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.